Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about hose configurations. Now, hose configurations on our airplanes have changed a lot since the line first started. Like the original two-place airplanes did not have an oil cooler. So you won't need an oil cooler line, not an upper, not a lower. The later four-place airplanes had an oil cooler. And you'll find a lot of commonality and similarity in the hoses that we have on our airplanes. And again, it doesn't matter in these hose configurations whether you're using a lifetime hose, whether you're using an Aeroflex hose, or whether you're using a Stratoflex hose. Oh, and by the way, the lifetime hoses can be both in brown or they can be in blue, which is right now currently in short supply due to demand. But it doesn't matter what your hoses are made out of, your hoses all fall into a standard configuration. Do you have an oil cooler? Do you have a fuel flow transducer? You know, those are the things that matter on your airplane. So now let's talk a little bit about these hoses for our airplanes you'll find that you have both number sixes which are used with an 11 16 syringe to break the ends loose and then you'll also find that we have number four hoses which are a 9 16 on the fittings so those are our hoses and let's talk a little bit more about them so we would like to ask you please subscribe hit the like button and hit the notify to stay current with our content so let's talk briefly here about what we're going to call variants on our hoses. Again, since the original two-place didn't have an oil cooler, you won't have those hoses. So you'll have three on the originals. If you've added fuel flow to your uh, two-place airplane, then you'll have four hoses. AA1Cs that have had an oil cooler, they'll get the upper and the lower, and they're usually through an oil filter adapter, and they're usually a number eight size, and she'll be using a three quarter inch wrench for those, or a seven eighths, depending on the manufacturer. But that's just for the two place. And then in the four place airplanes, both the Cheetahs and the Tigers, they have three number six hoses, one from the mechanical to the electrical fuel pump, upper and lower oil cooler, and then the number four gauges are always number four, both two and four place airplanes, folks. The number four gauges um, hoses are used for the oil and the fuel pressure ports on both the two and the four place airplane. The lengths will vary, but now let's talk a little bit more about the variants. So specifically in the original two place, you had no oil cooler. And then a lot of folks added an oil cooler with an oil screen filter adapter. And so now you have a two place with oil cooler. The four places all came standard with five hoses. And we've talked about the three number sixes for the mechanical to the electrical, the upper and lower oil cooler, as well as the number four fuel pressure and the number four fuel oil pressure that uh, go to the firewall. And then you can also add fuel flow, which will be additional hose. That means the one that goes between the carburetor and the mechanical fuel pumps will be two hoses because there'll be a fuel flow transducer in that line somewhere. And we'll talk about the lengths of those various configurations. And then finally in our airplanes, that if you've got JPI or Mitchell gauges, Okay, if you're using those, then all the original gauges can be removed from the aircraft. And by doing so, you're able to remove the aluminum lines that carry the flammable fuel and oil into the cabin. So now, that's one advantage. You get a weight savings and you don't have those flammable fluids in the cockpit anymore. Now we've talked about the different hoses. This is a brown lifetime hose with that integrated Teflon shielding and the stainless steel fittings on either end. But every hose that's on your airplane should have a tag and that tag will give the date of manufacture. Um, so you know some of the hoses like the AeroQuip and the Stratoflex are only good for 10 years and they have to be replaced. The brown and the blue lifetime conditional hoses are unconditioned their entire life. Until they leak they don't that's when they fail and that's when they get replaced. But anyway, it doesn't matter which hose you have, you'll have a tag on it. And now let's go talk about the various airplanes and all the hoses that play a part for that particular aircraft. Now in the Tiger, we have a number six 12 inch oil cooler upper hose. 
we have a number six 16 inch oil cooler lower hose and we have a, another one just like that a number six 16 inch that connects the electrical fuel pump to the mechanical fuel pump now where it gets squirrely okay let's cover it straightly number four 21 inches long will be an oil pressure port for that 21 inch hose now you have two options for the fuel pressure port and it all depends does your airplane have service kit 145-2 installed or not if you do if you have the service kit then your number four oil fuel pressure hose is 35 inches long and if you do not have the service kit as most people do not that was only for a few different serial numbers then the 26 inch fuel pressure port hose is what you have so those are the five hoses that you can expect on a normal tire now where you change that is is you're going to add two hoses a number six and usually a 21 or an 18 inch number six hose if you have a fuel flow transducer but stay tuned for that now working way are down the line in terms of engine horsepower isn't this exciting stuff talking about oil and fuel hoses folks but again just like on the tiger you have an upper and lower number six oil cooler hoses 12 and 16 inches you have a again a number six 16 inch hose between the electrical to the mechanical now the number four hoses for the oil and the fuel pressure ports on the chi on the travelers and the cheetahs it does not matter whether you have the 150 or the 160 horsepower but those lines are both number fours and they are 21 inches long now if you again if you have a fuel flow transducer there'll be that number six 16 inch line is usually replaced by a 16 inch um, or an 18 inch or a 21 inch along on the other side of the transducer with a short little number six six inch hose that way you get the good straight flow through the transducer that you need so that's the traveler and the cheetah now again in the original two place you didn't originally have an oil cooler but you did have a number six 16 inch from the electrical to mechanical fuel pump it's common on all airplanes and for the number four oil pressure line you had a 12 inch hose and for the fuel pressure line you had a number four 19 inch hose now if you go ahead and you add the adapter to the back of the engine then you can go ahead and get the optional oil cooler which helps the o235 run so much cooler in the summer and even in the winter but the number six uh, upper will be a 12 or a 16 unless you've canted your oil cooler as some people do then it'll be a 16 and an 18 for the upper and lower respectively so that's what you can do on the two place airplanes now again as with all of our airplanes if you go to the Mitchell gauges you won't have any flammable fluid lines in the cockpit and we'll be talking about that in a minute so enjoy flying your airplane now let's take a look at what though now these are you be showing the blue lifetime hoses but there's the upper oil cooler on a standard mounted oil cooler on the four place airplanes there's the lower oil cooler line you can see it snakes in over there by the fuel filter and you're catching a glimpse of the fuel line right there that comes out of the mechanical fuel pump through a transducer nice straight flow no fittings and then into the carburetor on the tiger so those are those so that's four hoses and then of course you'll have the hoses for the oil pressure and since we have sensors on the project tiger well we won't have any flammable lines in the cockpit but we have a number four hose on this side and one for the oil and they're all they're all safety they're all adele clamped they've been loomed and they're all attached to the um motor mount so that we don't have any vibration or anything now that's where the oil pressure port comes out right there by the magneto and on a tiger that's a hard one to do you can't change that unless you pull the magneto and then the other end goes into the transducer so that's covering a little bit there about the uh, mitchell gauges same thing applies that if you have a jpi then you won't have those um, fuel lines coming through the cockpit that reduces a little bit of weight cleans up your cockpit a bit and the fuel line transversing the firewalls the one that causes the problem but we'll talk about that in a minute so enjoy this view of hoses now some of you may have seen an oil cooler mounted on its side like this and some are even tilted about 10 or 15 degrees 
This is indicative of work that came out of Ken Blackman's shop up in uh, Snohomish, Washington. Ken liked to mount them on the side. He thought it gave them better cooling. You had a bigger opening, more airflow. He thought it was a good idea. And uh, there are a couple in the Cincinnati area. But if you see it, it's not illegal. You just have to adjust the length of the hoses. And for most of the configurations with a side-mounted oil cooler, the upper hose is 16 inches. The lower hose will be a number 6, 18 inches. And then again, if you've got the Mitchell JPI and even some of the EI stuff, um, you're going to have transducers. Now, they may be teed into the line because you still have to drive the original gauges. But if you can remove them, then you can cap everything off and now you don't have the flammable lines. Now, those aluminum lines inside, this is the one for the oil pressure. And that big, big thing on the top of that line sitting there, that's the hob meter oil switch. So that when the line was pressurized, it would activate the switch and those terminals would send 12 volts to the hob meter and it would start accruing the time so that you'd be paying for your rental time on the aircraft. And there's a little close up of the electrical connections. But you'll notice all the numbers, number four, uh, AN fittings uh, for the unions and everything that are uh, part of that oil line. So again, when you remove it, you can cap it off on the firewall side or you can run a bolt through there, whatever way you want to fill that hole for fireproofing. And then the line can be removed. Everything can be taken off. And this is the line, by the way, that would occasionally chafe. And there was a service bolt and the scat tubing or the skeet tubing to your defroster vents would rub against it. It would wear a hole through there and you'd have a small oil leak. And it's amazing how much 80 PSI can push out of a tiny little hole in your cabin. Don't ask us how we know that. And then let's talk a little bit about the fuel line. Now the cautionary note on the long transverse fuel line, fuel pressure line, it comes in on the pilot side right above the rudder pedals, runs across the firewall with two Adele clamps holding it there. The trouble is, is when you go to change your hoses, you want to grab the bulkhead on the firewall with one wrench when you break the line loose. That way you won't twist the aluminum line because it will cause a stress crack to form in the elbow right there by the fitting. And then what you're going to find is you're going to have is every time you're in a climb or have the fuel pump on, you're going to smell fuel in the cockpit. And that's because there'll be a fine mist of oil coming out. So ladies and gentlemen, I know this was a whole lot more than you ever wanted to hear about your your hoses configurations on your airplane but we gave you all the standard ones uh, and their hose measurements so if you're going to be ordering new hoses there are some numbers for you to use please verify them by the tags or by measuring the hoses that you have so again we hope you found all this useful and informative thank you so much for watching and have a great day flying your grommet So here's Tarzan eating our chive plant on the back porch. Oh, it was so tasty, he says. He loved it. And then we have Sweet Pea here in the window chattering at the uh, birds in their nesting box. And finally, we have Tarzan and his little bag of paper. And no, folks, we don't have a ghost. Not at all. Not in our house. What we do have is we have a cat in the cabinet. And... Um, it's fun when you hear that in the middle of the night. So we hope you enjoyed all of this. Thanks for watching.